Man, ever I say, my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV, dear. I see them. Yopo. This morning, I am excited because I'm told that the next pricing window will have fewer prices slightly reduced. I'm happy about that. I'm also happy to hear that inflation has dropped. My only deepest concern, and, and as many others uh, would have it, is also the fact that the food inflation is still up there, especially in farming communities. And my biggest worry is that we are supposed to be harvesting food that we will eat in during Christmas or the festive season and during the first quarter of next year. And food is still expensive. The question is, are we storing food in the warehouses? If we are not storing food in the warehouses, what exactly are we doing? How are we protecting ourselves? Because we don't want to get to the point where the conversations about how much we have imported into the country will become a, a, a big problem for us because we know how that drowns our city. So we will look into all of those ones. But while we are looking at these issues, there's also the conversation about the Akosobo Dam Spillage and how the victims of the Akosobo Dam Spillage are coping. And you know here at Media General, we've been trying to uh, collaborate with you and all our other benefactors and all our clients to make sure that those who have fuel, we're bringing it in, those who have food, those who have clothing, those who have whatever, we're bringing all in to support the victims of the dump spillage. So far, I can count off the top of my head about 11 low loaders or big trucks that have taken, you know, water and items to the North Town, Central Town, South Town, parts of the Eastern region, uh, Ketu South and all of that. That is from a private entity that is showing innovation and initiative and then two days ago i saw a video of a district chief executive a district chief executive supposed to be of the south tongue district and he made a statement listen to him listen to the dc you know i'm to Seth Kwesi Agbi, just listen to him, he's the DCE for the South Town, and the people there in Sogakope and other areas, they have so, been so angry, so angry at him. The DCE raising concerns that, oh yes, the food is there. The food is there, the food has been given to me. We have the supplies, but what we do not have is fuel to take it out there and i said wow you do not have fuel to take it out there but you have fuel to put in your official pickup or whatever it is to be roaming around it reminds me so much of another dc some place up north or so textbooks were taking there and exercise books and the rest and he said oh the official vehicle has broken down but he has a, a, a personal uh, you know a, an official vehicle that he cannot use to cut the books to the people i asked myself did did we have to wait for nine months we waited for nine months nine solid months in the second term of nana dodanko kufado nine months it was in pure violation of Act 936, which is the local government act. And I've read that, uh, that law from cover to cover. And I had occasion to challenge the president to say that, Mr. President, even though Article 241 gives you the right to nominate, all right, subsequent to approval of, of the assembly of your nominees, and we saw how some of them were engaged in bribery and corruption and all of that. There was no... There was no legal backing for waiting for nine months where assemblies couldn't take critical policy decisions because they didn't have a functional head in a DCE, MCE. Nine months we waited. We were told that we were vetting people. Nine months. We were vetting people at the party level. We brought people to the Jubilee House to vet them. Nine months. Honorable Dambotu, good morning to you. Nine months we waited. And this is the result of nine months that the people are suffering the relief items have been brought and then the dc says he doesn't have fuel and that's it listen to him to uh, rent uh, hide a, a, a car and send it to them i tell you oh that's a fact 
That's if I can't hide anything from you. You need money to flood the cars and send the item to the people. That is the only issue. That's the issue. And That's the only issue. Angry. Uh, we don't have money. So why don't you ask them to come? We ask them. I'll be asking the VRA. The VRA. The NAMU. I mean, I said them, they should give us something. As of today, I received the 20,000 Ghana City. We have said it already. There are terms there. It's a fact. It's a fact. So that is why it's happening. We need money to, we need money to, we need support financially. Yes. That's why it's happening. That is your DCE. If you have a leader like this, who, say, who throws his hands up in the air in despair, you have a DCE who takes property rates or collaborates with the GRA to take property rates or until recently when the GRA took over, the, uh, the assemblies were taking the property rate. Is he suggesting to us that he cannot, there are no companies within his area that he can walk up to as a matter of initiative and innovation to say, this is what has been brought here. We need X amount of money to be able to cut these relief items to the people. Somebody told me yesterday, a colleague of mine told me yesterday that, look, the distance we are talking about will not take you more than 300 cities to fuel the vehicle. So the people can stay there. If there are perishable goods among what has been given to him, they can, they, can, they can perish for all he cares. This is your DC. And we will have to wait for nine months to get this. Nine months. And he will take ex gratia. He's an Article 71 holder. You will pay. But he says there's no fuel. So is leadership just about occupying the positions or is leadership being uh, innovative and being selfless and being active when the people actually need you to be active? I asked that question. When I saw that video as a young man, I cringed. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But he knows nothing will happen to him. In any serious jurisdiction, and if we had been, for example, in a federal republic like Nigeria, a DCE will be equivalent to a governor. What that means is that all that space is for him. And even the MPs, when they have to come into those areas, they have to seek his permission first. He's the DC. Play the video again for me, please. No, no, no. Assembly, you have to read that thing. What are you doing? The, the money to uh, rent uh, a, a, a car and send it to them. I tell you. Oh, that's a fact. That's the fact. I can't hide anything from you. You need money to flood the cars and send the item to the people. That is the only issue. That's the issue. And that's the only issue. Angry. Uh, we don't have money. So why don't you ask them to come? We ask them. I'll be asking the VRA. The VRA. The NAMU. I'll be asking them. They should give us something. As of today, I received the 20,000 Ghana City. We have said it already. There are terms there. It's a fact. It's a fact. So that is why it's happening. We need money to, we need money to, we need support financially. Yes. Charlie, Charlie. We, as they say on the streets, we. Anyway. Today, the finance minister will honor us and respect the constitution. And on behalf of the president and the government of the Republic of Ghana, present the 2024 budget and financial statement to the country policy for 2024. You know that the finance minister is concrete, will wear all, all white. You know that the finance minister will bring a brown bag. And you know the finance minister will quote Bible verses. I'll give you a Bible verse very soon. But I want us to take a retrospective look of the, the names of the budgets that have happened under Nana Dodanko Kufado since he took power in 2017. When he took power in 2017, of course, you know that the campaigns were heralded by James Varek Amaz, uh, Oye, Asempapa. So there was the Asempa budget. That was the first one, which means good news. And indeed, if you look at the results of the elections from 2016, it means that there was good news. There was uh, a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, goodwill and everything else. So Asempa was good news. Then after the good news, they came a Juma budget or a Jumapa budget. A Jumapa budget. After the good news, there was a Jumapa budget, which is the, the good work. Or if you like, you're getting work. 
or if you like, the government was giving itself plaudits for doing a very good work after a Sempaso Ejumapa budget. And then after a Ejumapa budget, we had the Impunto budget. That's the progress budget. So a Sempa budget, a Jumapa budget, Impuntuo budget. Impuntuo budget. Right? Impuntuo budget. And then after Impuntuo budget, we had Inkoswo budget. Inkoswo progress. Inkoswo budget. Then after the Inkoswo budget, we had Inkambom budget. Inkambom budget. Unity budget. Inkambom budget. And then after the unity budget, we had Ajinkwa budget. Savior. Ajinkwa budget. So then I asked the question the last time. Ajinkwa budget, who is the budget supposed to be saving us from? In Punto budget, yes, it's good, it's good to have progress. But did the progress reflect in the lives of the people? Or did it reflect in the lives of a few people? In Kambon budget, were we disunited in the first place? And that impression is also being created on the religious front as if we are disunited. We have never been disunited in this country on the religious front. Fact. So, Asempa budget, Ejumapa budget, Mpunto uh, budget, Nkoswa budget, Nkambon budget, Ajinkwa budget. I don't know what this will be called. Never mind that they are all Akan names. Asempa is Akan. Ejumapa is Akan. In Koswa is a, a can. In Punto is a can. In Kabom is a can. Ajinkwa is a can. But never mind. But that has been the names of the budget. And they tell a certain tale. If there was a Sempa, and a Sempa brought a Jumapa, and a Jumapa brought in Punto, and in Punto brought in Koswa, and in Koswa brought in Kabom, and in Kabom brought Ajinkwa, you should ask yourself, where, where, where do we go next? Because now, as from Asempa, which is good news, now I say, hey, Benjamin Kwan. It's a serious matter. Maybe you have not thought about it that way. And today, Mr. Foyeta would give us Bible verses. I told you I'll give you one Bible verse. One of the Bible verses that we'll, we'll get, because people are anticipating that there could be taxes, or we could, we could take off some taxes and introduce some new financial measures, is John chapter 4, verse 35. And I, shot, I, I get it that Mr. Mr. Foriata will appear in Parliament and say, Mr. Speaker, I want to leave you with the words of John chapter 4, verse 35. Mr. Speaker, the good book says they are ripe, Mr. Speaker. It's possible that you could say that. But let's throw back and play a few of the videos. A few of the videos. During the year that we had the Ajinkwa budget, a few of the videos. Just play them. Play them at will, please. Play the videos at will. Mr. Speaker, the Yi Levy is also going to help with the fiscal consolidation effort and reduce the debt levels of our country. And that also means that we are going to see an improved economic ratings and not returning to the International Monetary Fund, which is the only solution our friends on the other side have always preferred. Why don't you go to the IMF? Go to the IMF. We have shown that we have alternatives to building the economy of this country without resorting to conditionalities that will be imposed on this country. We will not go to the IMF today. We will not go to IMF tomorrow. And we are not going as long as the NPP remains in power. That was John Kuma, Deputy Minister for Finance. Which other video do we have next? Stephen Amwa? Can you offer it? Okay, please take this video for me, please. We will pass it. Whatever they want to do, we, we will pass it at the right time. They can't do anything. We are in government. If they claim it will make us unpopular, why wouldn't they stop? Okay. Well, they know this is going to transform and change the lives of Kenyans. They know this is going to reverse the, the consequences of the COVID. They know this is going to put our fiscal space in the right perspective. And they are afraid that Kenyans will continue to build their goodwill and confidence in this government. So please, we need a yield levy. And those who are saying that we should reduce it to 1% and go. Boss, if you want something to be reduced to a certain figure, you can't just make that arbitrary statement. You cannot project out of nothing. You should project out of properly done time series anal analysis with your data points. Very convincing. Then we can understand that this is what we have to do. 
Yeah. That was Stephen Amoha. Then he was not deputy finance minister. Now he's deputy finance minister. He said, we will pass it and they can't do anything about it. That was E-Levy. The E-Levy we know has failed. How much have we generated? We don't know. Did it achieve what he said it was going to achieve? Ah, it is something that is there. Now, he says that the people are afraid. That's why they are talking about it. And that will, those are talking about reducing it to 1%. Have we not reduced it to 1%? Are we not now even charging even one peso transactions? The history is there. Listen to Mr. Befi, um, uh, Otri Befi. Listen to him. I am a for bailout or whatever. We go, we say, we're going to I am a for bailout. Do you know the meaning? The meaning is that people don't know. Immediately you say you want to go to IMF, it means that you are going to tell the IMF that the IMF, please, me Ghana, I can't manage the economy. So come and help me manage it. That's the meaning. Immediately you say you are going for a bailout. Immediately you take that decision. Then you mean that you are going to tell them. And do you know what the people they will bring? They won't bring their expert to. The, 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 the deputy finance minister was telling me that I said all the high level meetings they have had, high level meetings, small small boys, who come and take the decision. That's small boys, small small boys, who come and hey, hey, Ghana, do this. I see. So Stika is deputy trade minister, trade and industry minister. This was Mr. Beffy telling us that it was, it's going to be small, small boys. So the, the people, the IMF people at the Bank of Ghana Finance Ministry, now they are small, small boys. Is that the understanding? And then we know that the budget that will be presented today is IMF induced or IMF inspired. Was it inspired by small, small boys? Let's be careful the things we say. Play for me Mr. Kojo Pong Krumen's video. He's the Minister for Information. He's also the MP for Fasia Yerebi in opposition. Listen to him. Uh I am a Flona Emma Mekai Moody's report, you know. and in that Moody's report, you know, they seem to put a whole lot of premium on the the IMF choir, you know, and the discipline that comes with it. I am so it's me meaty. All the benchmarks are yet free and who benefit now is here. Yeah, you know. That's with, a fair point. With that, wouldn't you probably credit the administration to take a decision to go to IMF? Administration now or read now no money card go pay now. Ah, or call IMF or do a money could ja IMF no. So what should we credit him with? Or read now no money card go pay now if you are doing a call IMF no. But that is what mood is. But why do you have to in the first place? Who bury now no money card go pay now if you are okay? So okay, but me read now no card go pay we me do call IMF in the club for me for taking you to the IMF. So this was called your punk rumor. We are the IMF. Yeah, read now no money card go pay now. Have we chewed the chicken to the to the point of the bone? That was the argument. We are back at the IMF. Have we chewed the meat down to the bone? Listen to Ken Ophoriata. As um, uh, my colleague, um, Deputy Minister said, we are not going to the IMF. Whatever we do, we are not. The consequences are there. We are a proud nation. We have the resources. We have the capacity. Don't let anybody tell you. Like when Joshua, Caleb, and, Go and the 10 others went to spy on the promised land. And only two of them came to say that we can do it. And the 10 went around the community, murmuring, you can't, da, 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 da. We are not people of short sight, you know? And we have to move on. We have to move on. We are not people of short sight. We will not go to the IMF. We are a proud nation today. We are the IMF. And we are even applauding that we took ourselves to the IMF. And we are busy calling media houses liars for saying that we missed the first November uh, deadline or timeline for the second tranche of the IMF that we said we will not go because we are a proud nation. And guess it. We're, we said we're too proud to go to the IMF. The proud people today, they are eating a humble pie. They will be in parliament applauding the budget of the IMF. The proud people, they say proud people, they were applauding the budget of the IMF. And in this country, under this government, we Ghanaians, when you have a dissenting voice, we have either been called Sambalat and Tobias. Read about it in the Bible. Sambalat and Tobias, Google it. We have been called Ananias and Zafiria. We have been called names in the Bible. We have been called names because we had a divergent view. Listen to Professor Ransford Jampo, and he speaks the mind of many young people. He's a UTAC boss now at, at the University of Ghana. He speaks the mind of many young people. Listen to him. And I get super annoyed when things are hard, and then a politician sits and says that things are okay. 
How dare you tell me about my own living conditions? You do not understand my living conditions more than myself. And so, for politicians to say that things have been done right, and so they should be given the nod to go on, you should take a sample survey of the responses of the ordinary people and let them speak. Don't tell me this budget that they are going to be reading. They are going to be touting macroeconomic nonsense that do not reflect into the you no, know, it did not reflect in the lives tangibly, you know, of the people. And I'm saying that look, we cannot continue on that tangent as a people where you sit and you are listening to budget being read and government is starting certain achievements and they are giving jobs every day. I get people sending me CVs asking me whether we can find jobs, and I'm saying, but the government has provided a, a lot of jobs. Why are you not getting into that? Okay, we've done this, we've done factories, we've done dams, we've done all these things. The kinds of achievements that our politicians are touting, let me repeat, they are like the religious miracles performed on crusade grounds by fake pastors. Okay. Oftentimes, they are telling you that we healed this, this man, and um, he was crippled, and then he's being healed. And nobody in the area, in the community, knows that cripple. Nobody knows them. Important. Nobody knows them. And these are the kinds of achievements right. that politicians start. I don't settle for that. I okay. speak for Ghana. I speak for what is right. I am interested. We do not, we all cannot be traveling to be working in other people's countries. We want to stay in Ghana and we want Ghana to be a better place. So let politicians be candid in admitting, look, we have not done well. Um, if you give us another mandate, we think that we are going to be doing X, Y, Z. That appeals to me. But if you tout achievements that, in my view, do not tangibly reflect in my life, I get annoyed. Uh, I'm not pending TV. Now, so far, so good. Say so open online portal at work Ghana. Ah, you can share, you can follow, you can comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I append TV.